Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a unique expanding call to action section with Divi. So let's take a look at the final design we're aiming to design in today's tutorial. So over here we can see that these are our three designs and when I mouse over this area here we can see that it is expanding. Okay, so the same goes with this one as well and the final one. So this is what we're aiming to achieve in today's tutorial. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm in my admin dashboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. Now we can call this page whatever we want. So I'm just going to call this expand example. Okay, I'm going to click on use the Divi builder and then we're going to go straight over to the visual builder. Right, so what we need to do next is to work on our section. So I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on the gear icon to access the settings, and then I'm going to click on background. So what we need to do here is to start off by adding our colors on our gradient. So I'm going to click this uh, second tab, click the plus button. So our first color here needs to be white. So I'm going to select that. And my second color, I'm just going to paste my hexadecimal value in here like that. Now, if you'd like to use the same settings or the same colors as I'm using in this tutorial, you can head over to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Next, we need to come over here to the gradient direction and set this to 90 degrees. Start position, we need to set this at 70 and end position at 70. Next, we need to go to the design tab and add some padding. So I'm going to click on design, click on spacing, and then over here on the padding top, I'm going to add 10 VH and the same to the bottom. And then for the left and right, I'm going to add zero pixels. To create the top and bottom of our section frame design, we are going to add a top and bottom border to our section. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to border. So for the top, I'm going to select it like that. And I'm going to add my width, add my color. Again, I'm going to paste my hexadecimal value right in here. Next, I'm going to choose my bottom border. So I'm going to select my tab for the bottom, add my value in here. And then I'm also going to add my color. And as we did before, I'm just going to paste it right here. Okay, so right now we have everything that we need for our section settings. Let's go ahead and save. And then it's time now to go into our row settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by clicking on my row settings. And then I'm going to go to my background and add our image. So to add our image, we need to use this third tab. So I'm going to click the third tab, click the plus button, and we're going to choose our image. And the image I have here has dimensions of 1920 by 1316 but uh, you can use you know pretty much any size you need for your design depending on the size that you need and also uh, it's ideal that you use images from royalty free websites like pixabay all right so i've selected my image right here i'm going to click on upload an image so you can see here my image is now in the background the next thing i need to do is to make sure i have my settings set correctly so i'm going to start off here with the background image size so right now it's set to actual size we need to set it to cover next i'm going to come over here to my background image position and set it to center and then finally we don't want this image to be repeating so we need to make sure we set it to no repeat so i'm going to come over here and select no re no repeat Right, so what we need to do next is to go to the background gradient and uh, create our gradient. So I'm going to start off by clicking this plus button here. And for our first color, this is going to be white. So I'm going to select my white color here. And then here, we are going to use a transparent, transparent value. So I'm just going to drag this slider here so we can get these RGBA values. So what I want to do is to enter my details between the brackets like that. And then over here on the, gra on the gradient direction, I'm going to set it to 90. Start position, I'm going to set this to 15%. And then the end position needs to be set at 0. And then finally, we need to place the gradient above the image. So I'm going to say yes to this. Now it's time to give our rows a custom sizing. So let's go over here to our design tab. So let's start off here by making this with full width. So I'm going to come to sizing. I'm going to set this to full width. Next, I need to come over here to my gutter width and um, activate it. Now, what I want to do here is to set my gutter width to 1. Now, by doing that, we're ensuring that we don't have any spaces on the sides of our columns, which is exactly what we need. And then finally here, we need to come over here to equalize column height and set this to yes. Now, let's go head over to spacing. So over here, we need to add a margin of, of 5 VH to the bottom, and then we need to add 
padding off 5% to the top and to the bottom. Now we need to add some transparent borders to adjust the width of the row. So I'm going to come over here to border and I'm going to choose this first one right here, the border to the right, and I'm going to add my value of 15 VW like that. And then for my color, this is going to be an RGBA value, which will give us the transparency that we need. So I'm going to slide and then I'm going to paste my values between the brackets like this. Next, we're going to go to the left border. So I'm going to select it here. It's always a good idea that uh, you make sure that whatever you're adjusting here is activated. So right now I'm working on my left border. So this is why this one has to be activated. So again, as we did before, I'm going to add my value here for my left border width. And then over here, I'm going to add my color and my color is going to be white. Okay, so now that we have all this in place, it's time now to add our call to action. So I'm going to click this plus button here and choose my column structure. So we are going to go with two thirds, one third. So I'm going to select this. So over here, I'm going to start by adding a button module. So I'm going to select my, my button. And then we're going to start off by adding our button text. So our button text is just going to be as simple as our projects. And then for the link URL, for now, I'm just going to add a blank link. But in your case, you can add a link that will direct you to wherever you want the button to show up. Okay, great. So now that we have all that in place, we need to further customize this button. So we need to go to custom styles for button. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on button, and then activate use custom styles for button. So let's start off with our text size. So this needs to be bumped up to about 48 pixels. So I'm just going to stretch this until I get to about 48. So what you can also do here is you can also go into the mobile sizes and then add your specific sizes. So this enables that when you go on to a tablet or smartphone, this automatically adjusts and it's, it's the right size. So for our tablet here, I'm going to set this to 30. And then for my smartphone, I'm going to set this to 18 like that. Now let's add our button text color. So I'm going to come over here, click here on this area here, paste my hexadecimal value. We're going to come over here to our button background color and set this to white. Now for this design, we don't need the border width. So we are going to set it to zero. And then next we're going to go to our button letter spacing and set this to two. So right now we're using the default font. So let's use something a bit stylish and different. So over here on our button font, I'm going to search for a font called Carla. So I'm just going to search it like that, and then select it. Right, so over here on our font weight, we're going to make sure that this is set to bold and all caps. Now for this, we're going to need our, uh, our icon. So I'm going to choose an icon to go with this. And the icon that I'm going to choose is this one right here. So now that I've selected my icon, we're going to need an icon color. So I'm going to click here on this area and add my color. And this is a hexadecimal value. And as I mentioned before, if you'd like to use uh, the same colors that I'm using in this design, you can head over to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Okay, now it's time to add our hover state. So I'm going to start with the button hover letter spacing. So I'm going to set this to six. So now when I mouse over this area, you can see that when I hover over it, our letter spacing is increasing. And then you want to do the same as well for your, your mobile devices. You want to go in here by clicking this little icon, click on tablet. Now on the tablet, we need to set this to three. And on the smartphone, we need to set it to two. Great. Okay, so here's a quick tip. So let's say you want your icon to show all the time. So all you have to do is to make sure you come over to over here to only show icon on hover for button to no. So now we can see that our icon is always going to show, which is great. Now it's time to add some padding to our button. So let's come over here to spacing. So I'm going to select spacing. And then for my custom padding here, I'm going to add 15%. That's to the top and to the bottom and also to the left. But over here on the right, we're going to add 24% that. So now we can see that this area is nice and big. The next thing we're going to do now is to add a box shadow. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow and choose this second one. So I'm just going to do some adjustments here. So for our box shadow horizontal position, I'm going to set this to 58 pixels. Vertical position, I'm going to set this to zero. And for the blur strength, I'm going to set this to 80 pixels. And then for our box shadow spread strength, I'm going to set this to minus 43. 
Finally, we need to add our shadow color. So I'm just going to select here on the shadow color and I'm going to set this to 0.5. And over here on the box shadow uh, spread strength, you just need to make sure that this is minus 43 because the first time I entered it, it didn't register the minus. So make sure that the minus goes in. And then once you do that, you can see now that this button fits in very well into our design. So what we're going to do finally here is to add some CSS code to just make sure that um, our icon here stays in position. So I'm going to come over here to advanced, click on custom CSS, and then what we want to do is to enter it here on after. So this is the code that we need. So now we can see that our arrow has been positioned. So let me just do a before and after so you can see what I mean. So if I delete it, you can see that it moves closer to my text, but if I add my code, the button now moves over closer to the edge. So that's exactly what we need to achieve. Okay, so let's take a look at our final design. So I'm gonna save this. And as we can see, when I mouse over here, we can see that it's expanding and that is great. So let's say you want to add more sections. That's straightforward. All you have to do is to duplicate the section by just coming over here and clicking this button like that. And then you need to replace this image. So you go into your row settings click on background, and then we're going to replace this image. So I'm just going to delete this one here, click the plus button, and the image I'm going to add is this one right here. Click upload an image. And then what I need to do next is to change the text here for my button. So I'm going to save this for now, and then I'm going to come to my module settings. So instead of our projects, we can change this to maybe our portfolio, like that, and because we duplicated this, it's going to have the same design and the same animations. So this is how easy it is to add a new section. So go ahead and add as many sections as you need. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.